everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today I am going to dye something that is unlike anything I've dyed before. Today we are going to dye the Diamond Sock Blend from Paradise Fibers. This fiber is 70% merino top, 25% nylon, and 5% angelina glitz in two colors, ultraviolet and icicle. And what makes this fiber so incredibly unique is that the angelina is iridescent, and so it shifts between different colors, making it magical and unlike anything I've ever dyed before. Now I've known that these iridescent sparkle fibers have existed before, but to have it in a white base means that we can try to dye it. The problem, I have no idea how Angelina will behave through the dyeing process. I don't know if it's gonna melt, I don't know if it's gonna lose that shimmer, I don't know if it's gonna soak up dye. And that's why I've held on to this for a really long time and haven't dyed it yet. And so I realized I should take my own advice, and so we are gonna dye a tiny bit of this fiber to see how it behaves before dyeing the whole thing as just sort of a safety precaution. I am a Paradise Fibers affiliate, and so if you would like to learn more about this fiber blend, I will have an affiliate link down in the video description. I did receive the, this fiber for free in a Fiber of the Month Club box, but I also immediately went and bought more of this fiber, so I actually have more than what I'm holding here. So unlike Silver Stellina, these are a little bit more clear, and as I move it, I see pops of like purple, green, yellow, and orange, depending on the iridescent fiber that's there. The fibers themselves are a little bit translucent, so I think that that's also why we see the white fiber beneath them. But I do want to test this and dye it a deeper color to see what the fibers look like then, to see if they're still sparkly and things like that. And so we are gonna take a little bit of this fiber, if I can. There we go. All right, and I can see that I do have sparkle in this section and see how much it weighs. Okay, we've got about half a gram. Um, that I think is plenty for like a little bit of a test and is small enough that it isn't gonna really affect the fiber that we have overall. Okay, so this is so pretty and I would say it's more shimmery than sparkly, if that makes sense. Ooh. But you can see that there are, there we go, those fibers in here that have that shine and sheen to them. So we'll see if any of that is still present once we dye it. I filled this mason jar with about a cup of water. And because we have a half of gram of fiber, I want to use approximately half of a milliliter of a 1% stock solution. A 1% stock solution is one gram of dye dissolved in 100 milliliters of liquid. And so normally I might use 100 milliliters to dye of this, normally I would use 100 milliliters of the stock solution to dye 100 grams of yarn. So I'll use half of a milliliter to dye half a gram of fiber at a 1% depth of shade. Approximately, everything is all approximate. Now our fiber is not pre-soaked at all, but I am going to sort of add it in to the dye and ooh, so immediately just dipping it in and getting it a little wet, I see a little bit more contrast between the fiber, like the, the wool and nylon and the iridescent fibers. And that is sort of what I'm hoping we will see because I think that that would be really cool. Now, this fiber was not pre-soaked at all, uh, and so I don't know, we, you know, it could felt or any number of things, but I'm very, very excited. Okay, we need to add acid. And to our one cup of water, I want to add a teaspoon. So I'm gonna add two half teaspoons of white vinegar. Um, and this is a proportion of acid and liquid that is similar to what I might do. And so far I still see the glimmer of the Angelina, which is good. <laughs> so that's very, very good. But now I want to go and start heating this. And the reason why I'm using a jar instead of a big pot is that 
this is like such a tiny amount of fiber, I wanted to have just like a little setup. If I used eight cups of water, it might take a long time for the dye to absorb, so that's why we're going with the little jar. So I'm gonna add this jar to this double boiler and start heating things up. And I'm gonna heat it until the water looks clear. But I wonder if you can see, okay, see that little like pop of orange down there? That's some of that Angelina. Uh, and it's really popping against the dark. I'm curious and excited. So it's gonna take a while to heat this up, but I will probably heat it about 30 minutes and then we'll check back in. We have had at least 30 minutes of heat. And I'm gonna turn it down to low. And the good news is I still, and you're very blurry, see the color of the Angelina. Okay, I grabbed tongs. Okay, the water has mostly cleared. Um, but can you see? I still see sparkle and the Angelina looks really cool. Like, I don't think that that absorbed color, like you can see those colors so much more now. Uh, that is super cool. Um, I'm gonna pop that back in to here and I'm gonna let this cool. Um, actually, I guess I'll take this mason jar out and I'm just gonna set that aside to cool. Okay, it's cooled off and the colors in there, well, it's easier to see the colors now. And it looks like it's still shiny to me within the water. I really should have known uh, that the colors would stand out a little bit more on top of the dark fiber. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Yeah, you can see them from far away. Uh, because with nail polish, iridescent toppers show up better on dark colors than they do on light. But this looks shiny and vibrant and honestly amazing. And I debated, I actually have a lot more of this fiber. As I mentioned, I bought some and it, I, I looked through my stash and Paradise Fibers had gifted me even more. I wanna dye this whole piece. I wanna dye the whole thing navy. I think that the way that the colors are popping on that is so beautiful that, yeah, I, I wanna go with navy. Even if it's a tonal navy, I think that that would be amazing. So I'm gonna set this, actually I'll just set it aside there because we'll wash that uh, eventually. And here's the water we use from that water bath. I'm gonna go ahead, just add that acid on in. Uh, I would say this eight quart pot is about half full with water. And while we're at it, I'm gonna add two more tablespoons of white vinegar. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask, safety glasses, and kept my gloves were already on, and I measured out one gram of dark navy acid dye. We only have about 83 grams of fiber. I think we must have started with about three ounces to begin with. So our one gram of navy will give us a, something a little bit more intense than a 1% depth of shade, but it should let that Angelina shine so, so nicely. I dissolve the dye in some hot tap water. I am going to just add more water, it doesn't hurt. And I have a tiny bit of navy left over from when I was measuring out that original color. That's, it wasn't, that was already diluted and rinsed. But I'm gonna take our gram of dye and add it to our dye bath, which is a little bit warm, um, maybe lukewarm. It is definitely not cold, but it's also no longer still hot. And now we have our glorious, glorious fiber. Let's see, I don't wanna add it in as a braid because I would like uh, to get a little bit more coverage I don't mind if the coverage is uneven. Uh, and I mean, our fiber right now is currently dry. Uh, and so I'm just gonna add it in. It's not sinking in yet. I'm gonna need to press it, but I'm taking it out of that protective braid. Ooh, that's going in a lot faster and easier than I thought. That's cool. So, oh, this is so pretty. I am anticipating that because we've got some spots that are probably more dry and other spots that are more wet, that we will end up with some lovely tonal variation. Okay. 
The other thing I want to add before we bring this over to the stove to heat it up, because we have a gram of dye in here and we have 80 something grams of fiber, technically this will probably be darker than what we have here in our little sample uh, where we have a 1% depth of shade. This is gonna be a little bit higher. But let's take it over to the stove now. I know we're not quite in focus yet, but just look at those pops of color that you can see on the surface. Or maybe we are in focus and it just looks, it's a bit overexposed, but we can see, and especially as I move around, I see the shifts in those colors. And that is really, really, really cool, really cool. But anyway, I have the heat on and I want to get it nice and steamy, but I don't want it to boil. Uh, and we are gonna let it heat for 30 minutes at least. We may need more time for all the color to absorb, but at least 30 minutes. And so I'll check back in in a little while. It will take some time for the pot to just heat up to begin with. It has been about 30 minutes. And let's see how we're doing. Okay, that looks brown. That is both weird but also not that weird because I know of other people saying that their navy turned brown and I don't know. I'm not gonna worry about that or think about it too much because we've got so much color in here. Who knows, we may have a brown looking patch. But I, since most of the color has absorbed, I am gonna turn off the heat and leave the fiber in the pot to cool completely. It'll take hours, but I want it to be at room temperature before we go and wash it. But even with the steam, you can see all of the Angelina. It looks so cool. Oh my gosh. It's the next morning and let's wash our little sample. Uh, hopefully I didn't felt this, but this is so, so pretty. It worked so well. I am really happy. And I'm gonna add just like a drop of some dish soap to this water where we will eventually wash the whole thing. But I figured that I'd start off. There we go. How cool is that? <laughs> so, so cool. So I'm gonna commit a cardinal sin and let the water run over this just to rinse out that soap. But I'm gonna go hang this up to dry and we will wash the rest of the roving. Okay, and I'm now gonna fill this basin up. I guess I don't need to add more soap. I'm gonna fill that up the rest of the way so we can wash all of this glorious fiber. And I'm gently removing it from the dye bath and I am going to place it gently in here. And now, maybe there's like a hint of something, but that little bit of brown that we saw yesterday is gone. So I am gonna let the fiber just soak in here for a few minutes. Uh, I think this is a new like preferred way, since I'm not gonna vigorously wash roving, to put it in a bath with a little bit of soap. Just let it sit. Let time do its thing if anything is gonna bleed or come out, which I'm not expecting. I'm like, I don't see any color bleeding, but there's no harm in letting it sit for a couple minutes and then we'll come and rinse it after that. All right, it's been a little bit and I'm trying to gently remove the liquid. This fiber is stunning. I actually have a lot more of it too, <laughs> um, which I'm very, very excited about. And well, I have fiber that, not in combination, but there's definitely two different iridescent pigments in here. The, I think the white, or the icicle, which is that orange and green one, and then the ultraviolet, which is the more softer, like purpley blue one. And so I have an ounce each of merino wool with 30% of either of those pigments that you know we're gonna die at some point because that is incredible. Absolutely incredible. I will have an affiliate link to this beautiful Paradise Fiber Fiber down in the video description. But we're not seeing any bleeding. And so I'm going to go ahead and 
I guess I'm gonna go ahead and put this through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Okay, here is our sample. The yarn is shiny. You can see the glow of the different colors of Angelina so well. The ultraviolet is a little bit more subtle, but I think that that's because the orange and green in the, what's the color, icicle? I don't remember what the other color of Angelina is called, but that just has more contrast. And now I want to do, like I'm gonna draft a tiny bit out, and I wanna do something that I've seen Paradise Fibers do, and I am like just manually twisting, so not with a wheel, and I am not doing this well. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Harder than it looks to like add some like twist by hand and like I'm covering it up. It's like, okay, twist. I didn't draft that enough, so the twist's not really going through. There we go, getting some good twist. Ha ha! I spun some without spinning any, but let's look at what this fiber could look like. So this is a very pretty navy yarn with then just little pops of those colors to it. I like this so much more than the white neps because of just the sparkle and contrast that we have. It is so cool and it's really, really soft and I am just really excited by the potential of it. And speaking of potential, this tonal navy fiber is glorious. We have more dye here than we did in that first little sample. And because of how it was in the pot, we have some areas that are quite dark and areas that are a little bit more of a dusty blue. And depending on how you spin it up, there will be some gorgeous, well, no matter how you spin it up, there'll be gorgeous tonal variation. But I suppose you could pick out the fiber to make things more of a gradient if you wanted to, or spin as it is to get a tonal yarn. The Angelina pops so well, and my lighting is such that like the sparkle is hard to see, but the sparkle is there, and the fact that you can see the color of it <laughs> shows that it handled the dyeing process really, really well. And there's not enough of it in here for me to say, ooh, it melted and it fused to itself, because each like thread of Angelina is pretty well surrounded by the various wool. And so, I mean, like there's areas where it looks wavy and stuff, but I don't know if that's any different, if it was wavy before or if it was pretty straight. Oh, actually, I have some over here. Oh, I forgot I had more of this fiber. And so looking at it, can you see? Not really, it's really hard, I think, on camera to see it when it's with the white, just because the colors are so much more subtle. But yeah, there's like a crimp and waviness to it that I feel like it looks very, very similar. So, I mean, this is awesome. Now, again, could you just get some of this Angelina, this iridescent Angelina, and just card it in, or add a little bit as you're spinning your fiber? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you don't have to have something that's this cool already, but this is so unique that I'm really excited to dye more and play around with more applications. It has just legitimately been ages, I think, since I've dyed tonal roving before. Uh, this is something that I really need to play with again because I've just kettle dyed it in one color and oof. It was so fun and the fire came out so well. I'm really, really, really happy with how this has turned out. And again, when we dye the fiber that is 30% Angelina versus 5% Angelina, if the Angelina fuses together, we will find out. But I'm much more likely to just go ahead and give it a shot off the go versus first dyeing up a little sample like I did here. Of course, dyeing a sample again is a choice I can make because going and dyeing a little sample when you're not sure if your fiber is dyeable with the dye type you wanna use, if it'll work with a technique you wanna try, it is a way to potentially save off disaster. I mean, that seems like a little bit of an extreme way to put it, but 
if the heat process is gonna damage the fiber in a way you don't like. Like, to be honest, maybe like from the times I've dyed acrylic yarn, sometimes just knowing how the fiber will behave with a process, it's worth trying just a little bit before you go and dye the whole thing. Because if you don't like how it came out when you're dyeing half a gram, you're probably not gonna like how 80 grams is gonna look. So anyway, I hope that this video was really helpful. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and please, please, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I publish at least two new videos every single week. And I am always trying to learn more things, trying to try different things. And I'm glad that I could finally give another example of what I say. Try dying a tiny bit first if you aren't sure if what you want to do is even going to work. I do have a Patreon. You can go learn more about the cool perks that I offer over at patreon.com slash chemnitz. The perks for patrons include behind the scenes sneak peeks. Every month I film a live stream while working on an episode of Dye Pot Weekly. And so you get to have a little bit of sneak peek of something that will be coming on the channel eventually, but also then sometimes you can provide feedback and suggestions on how that video gets put together. And that is so much fun, both for me, but hopefully for you as well. So again, I'll have a link to my Patreon down in the video description. This fiber is glorious. And I have a lot more. I have eight ounces here. I think I have even four more ounces of it upstairs. So what other techniques would you like to see me do with it? My gut says I want to go for things that are more saturated because that really does allow this Angelina to pop. It really makes something feel very galaxy and cool. And so my inclination is to go for darker, saturated, moodier colors, uh, but I'm open to suggestions. And I think I definitely want to try something where uh, we have more than just tones of a single color. But yeah, leave those suggestions in the comments because whew, I'm excited to dye more of this fiber. Thank you so much for watching.